Hey, this is Kayo from EssentialDeveloper.com. In this video, you'll learn how to create your own Swift view controller lifecycle observers. This is specifically useful when composing and creating reusable view controllers. For example, let's say we have a service, uh, like an items service, and we want to reload the items every time the controller appear on screen. Well, we can just use onView will appear and pass a closure, and the closure could be the service reload items method and boom it's done so this gives us the ability to compose the service and the controller where the service doesn't know about the view controller and the controller doesn't know about the service for example a factory or an assembler can compose these two objects together very simply another example let's say we have an analytics type like items analytics and we want to log or report every time we show the list view on screen so on view did appear this time and we pass the analytics report function as a closure and the solution is based on ui view controller containers so there is no need for external frameworks swizzling or subclassing so let's go okay let's start with a new project Let's make it a framework. Uh, let's call this view controller lifecycle observers. Unit tests, yes, please. All right, here it is, our empty project. Let's create our first test. Okay, so I don't know how to call this test yet. So let's create a view controller first. That's gonna be our system under test. So as I said before, we're going to be using the view controller container APIs. And if I want to add a view controller to a container view controller, I add them as a child. For example, sut.add child view controller, and then I can pass another view controller here. And the parent delegates the lifecycle messages to all the child view controllers. For example, view will appear messages, view did appear messages, view will disappear messages. And that's pretty much how we want to handle it. So let's start with an assertion that I want this view controller to have a child view controller. So let's say the count should be one. When I call the method on view will appear and pass a closure, for example. So that's pretty much the API we want. And as you can see, this is not going to compile because there is no such method. So let's create one. Okay, let's call it UI view controller plus lifecycle observers. Make some more space. Great. First thing, import UI kit and let's create an extension on UI view controller to expose a method on view will appear. Let's give it a closure. Let's call it callback. And that's all to make it compile. So let's run the tests and we should see a failing test. And we do. Look at that. We're expecting to have a child view controller after we call this method, but we don't. So let's make the test pass simply by adding a child view controller that does nothing. <laughs> let's run again. Right, let's give this a name now. So let's call it view will appear observer is added as a child. Okay, great. Next, as part of the container view controller APIs, we need to add the child view controller view to the parent view hierarchy. So let's create a test for that. Test view will appear observer view is added as subview. Great, let's copy this implementation. This is very similar, but this time let's get the observer child. That should be the first element in the array. Let's create an assertion that the observer view, well, super view should be the container view. Let's run this again. It fails, of course. So now we can create our observer, add it as a child. Then we add the observer view to the parent hierarchy. And one more mandatory action we need to take to respect the containers API is to call did move to parent view controller. Let's run it. And it's passing. Fantastic. But since this view controller is just an observer, I don't want its view to ever show up. So let's add another test. View will appear observer view is 
invisible. That looks reasonable. Again, we can copy this. We have the observer. So we just check that the view is hidden property. Should be true. Run the tests. It should fail. And it does. Perfect. So what we can do before we add it as sub view, we can make it invisible. Run the test again. They pass. Fantastic. Now we can guarantee that we are adding a child view controller to a parent or a container correctly. Okay, so next test, we can now check that we are actually firing the view will appear closure when the observer child view controller receives the message. Let's create a test. View will appear observer fires callback. Again, we can copy this setup. Let's change just what we need. So we need to know how many times the closure was invoked. So let's accumulate a count every time the closure is invoked. Let's create an assertion that it should start at zero. But then if we call view will appear, then we expect the count to be one the first time. And let's make sure that if I call it again, it increases. So it means it fired the callback. Great. I think that's it. Let's run. Okay, that failed. So we need to create now our child view controller and we can make it private because our public API just exposes the method that receives the callbacks. And I like that. We can call it view controller lifecycle observer. And of course, it's a subclass of UI view controller. So it can be added as a child. So let's create a convenience initializer. We can pass here a view will appear callback. And that is an escaping closure. Let's give it a default value. And we need to hold a reference to the closure. So let's create a private property. And we can use the same name here. Now let's call it init and set up our property with the given callback. Let's override the view will appear method. And now we invoke the callback every time view will appear is invoked. And let's use our view controller instead of this dummy view controller and pass our callback. Great. Run the tests. Ah, it needs to be escaping. Great. Let's try to build again. Run the tests. And now they pass. Great. So we have the implementation we want. But now let's do some refactoring because this doesn't look great. First of all, we can create a private function. Let's say add. And you have an observer view controller. And we can move all this logic in here. And here we just call add view controller observer. And we can break this down into another line. Okay, let's run. And they pass. Okay, that looks great. So one more thing we can do to make this observer more useful is to be able to remove it as well. So let's create a test. Test can remove will will appear observer. Okay, so let's create our SUT. And let's say we call on view will appear and we call dot remove. And the expectation is that I have no child view controllers anymore. Of course, I cannot compile because we are not returning anything. And I want to call this run. So it's more readable in the point of use. Okay, so we need to return something that can be removed. And we could make this class public and return it in this function and add a method remove. But I don't want to expose through this API that we are using containers. So what we can do is, well, we can create a protocol. Let's call it UI view controller life cycle observer. And you have a method called remove. And we can return this protocol here. And for now, we can make the UI view controller subclass implement this protocol. Let's create the remove function and do nothing for now. Now we can make this into a property again. We add the observer and return observer. Okay, this should compile now. Let's run the test and it should fail. And it does fail. So let's make it pass and do some refactorings here. Because as you can see, we got some warnings as well because this function now returns a type. But let's make this test pass. And to remove a child, we have a sequence of operations we need to do. The first one is to call will move to parent view controller and pass nil. And then we can call 
for now to make the test pass remove from parent view controller. Okay, let's run the test again. Okay, it's passing. So before we carry on, I want to fix this warning. As you can see, on view will appear now it turns a result, but we are not using it. And that's very simple. We can just tell the compiler that this is a discardable result. And if we build again, the warnings are gone. And next, our last test can remove view will appear observer view. And the assertion is that our system of the test view subviews count should be zero, which means it was removed. Okay, as you can see, it failed. Perfect. Now let's remove the view from the super view. Run the test again, and it passes. Okay, I think we are done. So if we go back to our playground here, we can now get the observer and we can remove it if we want to. And I think we're gonna stop here. You can implement the view did appear and the other lifecycle methods as an exercise. You can find the final source code on GitHub. The link is in the description. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time.